today we will be taking this base, which is the Gilly research base that was solving the crater conundrum problem, and we will be returning it back to Kerbin, hopefully with all three Kerbals intact and the mission objective fulfilled for some glorious science. Hello everybody, I'm Gromforx and I'm playing KSP2, the Crater Conundrum Mission Continuation. If you have missed the previous episode where we have been sending this bad boy all the way to Gilly, well, there will be a link in the pinned comment below. However, let's get on with it. As first, I would like to thank all of my YouTube uh, patrons, and, or, or patrons and channel members. You guys help me a lot with what I do, so big shout out to you and thank you very much for your contributions. Anyway. We have our Jeb here, over here, who is planting the flag and performing the orbital observations currently, scratching his butt a little bit, dancing and doing all kinds of wonderful things on the surface of Gilly. They're currently taking the, you know, the surface sample, because that's kind of important, and uh, planting the flag, because we need to mark that we have successfully conquered Gilly. Yay! There you go. Stick it, buddy. All right, that feels so good. Yeah, got it. Okay, you just had to scratch it, didn't you? Anyway, so we will be returning him back to the capsule and then we should be considering the return because we have loads of samples, 3.2 thousands of samples and we have 750 amount of data. So we're going to be sending the data right about now, just making sure that we transfer everything and get all of this glorious science that we should take in. And after we're done with that, then I'm be taking this bad boy upwards and onwards all the way back. So yeah, stick with me, this is gonna be fun. There we go, taking off slowly, engaging the engines. Oh, stabilize it, stabilize it, gear up, and here we go. I mean, you're watching this, guys, at honestly, I think this is eight times acceleration because when you're so low to Gilly, Things tend to get very slow. Yeah. Anyway, we're gonna be taking this thing into the orbit of Gilly and then we're gonna be performing a long wait or basically waiting until Gilly and Eve get into the favorable position to do an interplanet tra interplanetary transfer to Kerbin. Sorry, I didn't have my morning coffee, so that means that my tongue is twisting like there's no tomorrow. Yeah. All right, going up at the three times time acceleration plus nine times acceleration through the magic of video editing. Yes, thank you, Da Vinci Resolve. Uh, right, so performing some... Uh, oh, running mid midlands? Come on, what now? If I press now, oh, running in the high orbital survey. Oh, that we can do. So, as you can see, the orbital lab, it's big, it's clunky, and it requires two kerbals, but it yields a lot of science. So hopefully, by the amount when I return, I will have enough to unlock some new nodes, which will help us subsequently with the further missions, such as like, you know, those 300 ton missions, or maybe something else, who knows? Yeah, so come on, orbital survey running for another minute, and we're gonna be picking up the slack right where we left off. So let's see, here we go, and sending do I have anything to transmit? I think I should. Doesn't seem to be like that. Okay, who cares? We need to be returning this bad boy because the majority of our, you know, things will be coming in the moment we land or back on Kerbin. And that will be a huge boon, so yeah. Oh look, this is a beautiful screenshot. I think I'm gonna take this for the screenshot for the episode. What do you think, guys? I mean, it just looks awesome, doesn't it? Yeah. Definitely. Right. So, the burn is gonna be taking just 6 meters per second, so it's only a tiny puff, you know, like a mouse fart or something, you know, like when you go far drive. Okay, done. See? There it goes. Yes, I produce my own sound effects. Uh, now, speaking of that, now we should take a look. Now we need to go back to the tracking station and I need you need to go first to the VAB and then to the tracking station or basically KSC or whatever so that your craft is not loaded front up and center so that you can press the time acceleration to go extremely quickly. Yeah, what can I tell you? Afterburners are expensive. 
Okay, having said that, now we're gonna take, in, gonna take the Gilly base and we are in favorable position, so we should be ejecting out of Gilly onwards to Eve and then we're gonna be planning the interplanetary transfer back to Kerbin. So, let us just see what can we do there and what can we advance. All right. Now, let's see if we can shoot out, create a maneuver node, eject this just gently, and if we can, that would mean that we have successfully launched all the way up to the Eve periapsis. And I think it's actually good. We don't need it to be perfect. We just want to be ejecting out of Gilly. So as soon as we are out of Gilly, we're good. Uh, and this should be happening in 10 minutes-ish. So let me just see if we can just do... Uh, well, I don't know, need to do a, do a time skip. Let's just burn now. Yeah, there we go. See? Bye-bye-bye, Gilly. And thanks for all the science. And hopefully we will help us advance our interplanetary voyage further and i would really devs i would really like an extra acceleration step just one notch on that acceleration because this is going very slow and i have no idea why look at this so to make you guys not wait i have decided to accelerate the video i think it's eight to nine times at this point so yeah see this is the video editing, not me. Right. Now, we are we have gone out of the Gilly Sphere of Influence, which means we can now do another maneuver node that would hopefully shoot our Gilly Base 22 out of the Eve Sphere of Influence and onwards back home to Kerbin. So that's the plan. All right, and we're going to be taking this bad boy, placing it here. The burn is not big, it's gonna take 100-ish or something meters per second, maybe 200. And after that is done, we're gonna be just shooting it out. Alright, getting ready for the burn and hitting the gas. Beautiful. The moment it finishes, we will be ejected from EVE. And, oh, actually we won't. We'll just be on a good trajectory. The next burn will shoot us out. Perfect. All right, so I think it's time that we move our crew from the Star Lab back because, after all, we need to move them because we'll be detaching the Star Lab. So, all in all, assuming we move them out of this shenanigan and into anything else, into the capsule will uh, secure that we don't leave them stranded somewhere in the interplanetary space between Eve and everything else. So yeah, please go back and hello, yeah, take a wave. Bye bye, beautiful, okay, get in. And then we're ready to get back. Perfect, awesome. Right, now let's plan the ejection maneuver from the Eve. And that one actually is two degrees tilted from the Kerbin. So once we get closer to Eve, hello, we're gonna be performing the burn. The burn is 29 meters per second, merely. And um, all in all, that's fine. Getting ready, preparing for the burn, and then we're gonna be up, up and away. So. Let's get this thing out of the way and fire the thrusters and there we go. Off into the interplanetary space we go. Beautiful. Right, I'm even thinking now I should probably be detaching this thing. It's a beautiful screenshot and uh, off we go. So I think maybe not to leave a debris around Eve or going anywhere around. So let's just get first out of the Eve sphere of influence before we de detach this bad boy and go on our merry way in terms of setting up the maneuver that will be getting us back to Kerbin. After all, it's kind of important because we have, we're schlepping a lot of science and we want to make sure that we are in the right place. Yeah, few frame stutters aside, we have the maneuver plan here and we're gonna be t tilting off this degree to zero, which will ensure that we get quite close to Kerbin at some point. So let us now plan the transfer burn. And let's see how close do we get. Oh, we got pretty close. Uh, 
I think with some maneuver node fiddling we could get into the Kerbin's... We could get the Kerbin periaps, you see? The distance from target is reducing and as long as I'm dragging along we should be getting a Kerbin encounter right about now. And we did. Perfect. I don't need it to be more precise than that, this will work just fine. So it's 982 meters per second burn. Of course, saving the game, decoupling and saying bye-bye to the Orbital Lab. You have given us a lot of good experiments and once we are getting closer, we will be performing the burn. We have 2098 meters per second in the current stage, which is more than enough to get us back home safely, including all of the science that we have lovingly collected. Kicking in the afterburners, we want to make sure that the burn will be performed as accurately as possible. And now I'm monitoring to see if I get the curb in periapsis. The moment I get it, I'm gonna throttle down and hopefully get us... Oh, there it is, there it is. And okay, now let's see. Can we just fine tweak it a little bit? I'm focusing on curb to tweak the periapsis ever so gently. We want it to be nice and tight, as tight as we can make it. I think 4,000 is enough until we get closer to Kerbin. So let's get closer to Kerbin and hopefully we can do this via the re-entry. So I'm not gonna do any maneuver nodes until we get into the Kerbin sphere of influence because we have plenty of Delta V, so we should be able to curve it and cut it close enough to perform an arrow break. Good. Now, with the being in the Kerbin Sphere of Influence, let's plan another maneuver node. And I'm thinking of putting a periapsis down to 45k, roughly, because 45,000 will ensure that we get a very, very nice arrow break maneuver. I've already tested this, I think, from even Elu, so the heat shield, sh heat shield should show, should hold up. And assuming that we get it nice and tight, we will be able to then perform the burn and uh, hopefully land safely, retrieving all that good science with us. 480, tweaking the maneuver now down to 42-ish. I think that's fine. Point the, man the craft maneuver prograde and let's do the burn. No need to wait because as long as we burn in the right direction, we will be lowering our periapsis. Almost there, and 46-ish. I'm happy with that one, and let us go and hopefully bring three of our heroes home. With some minor stuttering, we are enjoying the beautiful view of Kerbin as we approach it, which should be happening within in the next couple of minutes or so. There we go, looks good enough to me. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're 300 kilometers above. I think what I want to do is I want to point orbit retrograde. I'm probably gonna fold in the solar panels and fold in the antenna. We don't intend to save them anyway because we will be detaching uh, the craft because we need a heat shield after all. And um, But I will be performing the deceleration burn somewhere around 100 and 10 kilometers or 120 point downgrade and just hit the burn to consume all that fuel and at the same time reduce our orbital velocity so that the heating doesn't get overly excessive all right kicking that one out and look at it three of our guys are going backwards happily into the atmosphere look at them cook isn't that glorious and i'm gonna accelerate the bananas out of it because i think this part is actually gonna take a while, so might as well, you know, just accelerate it for your benefit. You really don't need to watch it for 10 minutes as I did. So let's see, we can boil it down to I think one or two minutes should be enough. Two parachutes deployed, we are reducing to surface velocity of 10 meters per second. And the further we descend, the further we slow down for a nice splashdown. And going back to our recovery vessel, we have recovered a lot of science. Look at that, 7.7 thousand. And if we also submit the science report, we are at 10,000. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.